Hello, everybody, and thank you so much for joining us here at Extract again. We are the only holistic tattoo removal method, original and revolutionary, created by Dr. Ben Johnson and Tina Sy. Last week, we left off with Tina had went into depth about the science and product knowledge of a lot of our the products that we use in the mid and touch base on them again in a little bit simpler form talk about it from a technician standpoint as well as how to uh, clients should expect from this so we're going to start with leah from the uk discussing the activation there. Hi guys, um, so I'm basically going to be covering our activation serum, which is the first out of like the three products that you really use for the extract removal process. Um, so I'm going to touch base on um, the kind of three main active ingredients in the serum, um, the benefits of them, and then just kind of what to expect from the serum during um, a procedure as well. So the first ingredient cover is our um, saline so we do like to make it quite clear that we are not like just a saline product and um, for our product itself there is saline in it and um, but it is 10% or less in the activation serum so we don't rely on osmosis for our um, removal process but we do contain um, Himalayan Himalayan saline sorry um, so Himalayan saline is obviously extracted from um, Himalayas and it's been it's obviously its purest form, it's free from pollution and it's basically got supercharged um, negative ions. So these are kind of activated um, in the skin and they're going to start to pull out the ink basically. So again, that um, saline, we're not relying on the osmosis, we're actually relying on on the negatively charged ions for our removal process. Then the second um, ingredient that is in our activation serum is bentonite clay, which is also known as a healer. So the bentonite clay contains over 74 naturally occurring minerals. Um, it's known to be antibacterial, which is obviously great because we're opening up the surface of the skin. Um, it purifies wounds by increasing the oxygen levels. Um, and it also holds its own electromagnetic field. So again, negatively charged ions, and it's going to pull that ink. So we work with what's called inculation technology. So chelation is essentially a um, movement through those uh, positively charged ions attaching to negatively charged ions. Fabulous. And then the last and most important one in the activation serum itself is the 1,3 beta glucan. And this is really what kind of sets us apart from any other removal method. Um, the 1,3 beta glucan, let me just scroll down on my notes. Um, I'm just going to cover something first before I start going into what 1,3 beta glucan does, because I'm not sure if you guys know what a macrophage cell is. So a macrophage cell is um, a large white blood cell and it's part of our immune system. So there's two different types. You've got fixed macrophage cells and then you've got roaming macrophage cells. So fixed, mac cell, uh, fixed macrophage cells, sorry, um, that are in our skin that encapsulate the tattooing for your dermal macrophage cells. And then your roaming macrophage cells are cells that um, identify like a foreign object in the body and they travel throughout your body and they come and encapsulate it to try and protect you from that um, foreign body basically. So what the 1,3-beta-glucan does is it stimulates the fixed macrophage cells to hold in the ink to release it. So it stimulates those and it releases those ink particles. And then it also triggers an immune response. So it, it creates an influx of the roaming macrophage cells and it brings an influx of those to the area to start eating up um, debris and kind of leftover or already dyed cells, which are essentially what your fixed macro macrophage cells were. So basically what we're doing with the 1,3-beta-glucan is we're tricking the body into thinking there's a yeast infection in the area. So it kind of targets that one specific area and it sends an influx in there to try and clean everything up. So they're kind of the three main ingredients um, of our activation serum. Our activation serum isn't like 
other removal products I've used before, it's quite got quite a thick kind of gloopy consistency um, and it's quite nice to work with actually. So our activation serum um, is actually alkaline, so it's not massively alkaline, um, but it is at have an alkalinity of 8.7. So we don't rely on it being, again, alkaline. It's not an alkaline removal system. It's insulation technology. But the fact that it is alkaline does benefit our removal process. So it minimizes the risk of infection because bacteria struggles to grow in an alkaline environment. And it also allows um, our ingredients to kind of penetrate a lot deeper because it stops the blood from coagulating. And then that therefore allows kind of free movement of the cells in the area. So with that being said, that obviously um, affects how our treatment looks or how the needling looks when it's just been done. So the first thing that I want to say with our removal process is, I mean, we're not allowed adrenaline um, in our anaesthetics in the UK anyway, but um, you kind of want to avoid using adrenaline because it's almost counterproductive. It's a vasoconstrictor, so it's going to stop those um, blood cells coming to the area. So we want to be able to see and assess the redness. So like I say, if we can't, if we are using a vasoconstriction, we can't see how red the skin's going. Um, it's all, we, it, there's a risk of overworking the skin there. So you're always better off not using um, anesthetics with adrenaline or epinephrine in them. So if you're not, obviously, which like, like I say, I prefer not to, we do want to see some redness to the skin. You do, on the area that you've been working, you do want to see um, almost like that cherry red. So what you'll find with extract and the activation serum as well, because of that inculation technology and the um, negative um, ions attaching and drawing up those positive ions, you actually start to visibly see the tattoo being lifted as well. So it almost looks darker. Um, and like a more a newer tattoo, if anything, because you can almost see that matte kind of black tone or obviously if it's the lips, it looks a little bit more vibrant and closer to the surface of the skin. I do always prepare my clients that they are going to experience a, a little bit of pain. Um, it's not a painful procedure. I've had it done myself on um, a few different areas, just my first treatment and I'm on body tattoos that is. So that's something that will be documented in the future. Um, but you do get a little bit of swelling with it and um, when it's just been needled and like I say you are going to experience a little bit of redness around the area and um, a little bit of a stinging sensation um, but obviously nothing worse than you would get with a very high concentration um, salt saline mixture anyway if anything because of the um, Himalayan, not the Himalayan sorry, because of the bentonite um, it is a lot calmer than other methods that I've used in the past. So if um, the needling is done correctly, which obviously is super, super important because with any removal method, if you needle the skin, um, you, there's potential if you're not needling correctly to do trauma, obviously. So with the correct removal method, the extract focuses on, that's why we have such in-depth training. Obviously, we've got the online training first and then we do a two-day class instead of just online or just a one day. Um, the skin should be completely intact. Although it will look red and you'll be able to see that tattoo, the skin itself, if you look up close, it's not traumatized. It's not mush or anything like that, which I have seen with even just straight up body tattoos, not even just removal. When the skin's overworked, obviously the texture of the skin almost looks velvety, like you could move it around to touch, which you won't find with this. The skin's really, really intact. Um, and then, like I say, just a little bit red around the actual um, tattoo itself. But I think that's everything on mine. I might have just touched on some stuff on, on yours, Julia. Um, but I'm going to pass it over to Julia now to talk about the second part of our treatment. Um, yeah, so there you go, Julia. All right. I made a little presentation. I'm hoping you guys can see. Oh, hi. There's everybody. I didn't know how this was going to work. Let me see if I can actually play it from the slide. Give me a second. Okay, perfect. Yay. All right. So I'm here to talk about the withdrawal mask, which is the second process after the needling with the activation serum. And the first thing that I want to talk about, uh, bridging on what Leah was talking about, how the skin isn't, isn't overly red, not overworked. In the United States, we do use anesthetics. It's legal for us, and I do use them for my practice. So as she said, I think that was very, very helpful. What Leah had mentioned uh, is how overworked skin looks. So even if you're not having the redness, it's very, very, very important to take note of how um, the texture of the skin. So that's how you're able to tell, not only from the redness or lack thereof, but uh, of the texture. Anyway. 
So bridging to my point uh, with the withdrawal mask is that when the client has it put onto their skin, they immediately feel a sense of cold relief. That's the thing. So it almost feels like an ice pack was put on there. And I don't know why the science of, of it is like this because I don't keep mine in the refrigerator. I keep mine shelf, but for some reason it just has a more cooling effect to it. It could possibly be because of the, the lavender oil that's in it. I don't know. I have to research more about that, but that's the general effect. And everybody says that. So, okay. So back to my presentation. So, oh, and, and another thing, after you've removed a withdrawal mask, I don't know if anybody else has noticed this, but I noticed that the skin actually blanches a bit more and it calms down a lot. So with the withdrawal mask, it does take away the redness and it takes away the inflammation as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's a really cool thing about it. Now I'm going to go into the ingredients and what I've discovered from the ingredients of the active ingredients of the withdrawal mask and why it does this. Here's the, I just made this this morning. It's so cute. I love Microsoft. Okay, so the active ingredients are bentonite clay, the same thing as in the um, activation serum, the activated charcoal, and essential oil of lavender. Now, who, are, who would have thought that flowers could be medicine? But they are. <laughs> okay, so jumping on what Leah said, I'm just going to read off this um, presentation. So bentonite clay, exactly what it is, it's composed of ash from volcanoes, and the largest known source of this clay is found in Fort Benton, Wyoming, hence the name bentonite clay. I never knew that, uh, which is really interesting. It's the same thing with wine. So, but anyway, not to get off topic. So bentonite clay holds an electromagnetic field that attracts tattoo ink. Literally, it holds the opposite charge of what the tattoo ink holds. So as, as in the activation serum and the withdrawal mask, it still continues to take out the tattoo ink even after the, the uh, needling process, okay? It also removes heavy metals and other toxins and it brings it to the surface of the skin for removal. Um, what's cool about the bentonite clay as well, not only does it remove, but it also contains 74 naturally occurring minerals, which increase the oxygen levels to purify wounds and to reduce overall inflammation. So not only are we taking out the toxins out of the skin, we're also healing the skin in the process. Okay, so this clay has been known for centuries as the healer. It has been shown to speed up wound healing by 50% in laboratory studies. And I'm all about the science. I wanna, I wanna prove it by numbers, okay? Okay, so it also is effective in killing harmful bacteria, okay? And in a study published by the Journal of Antimicrobial Chemotherapy, quote, results indicate that specific mineral products like bentonite clay have intrinsic heat stable and antibacterial properties, which could provide an inexpensive treatment against numerous human bacterial infections. What's cool about this is not only are we, again, removing the tattooing, and impurities. We're also purifying the area and preventing future um, infections from whatever comes into the skin through the open wound, which is really nice. Okay, so it also it's been shown to act as a de detoxifying agent and is referred to as a polycationic nature, which leads to absorption of negative charge toxins. It also shown to act efficiently in healing in, in skin lesions and ulcers. So you can actually put it on a wound and it'll help to heal. Okay, there's a lot more about bentonite clay that's interesting, but let's move on to the next topic, activated charcoal. So activated charcoal is known for trapping harmful chemicals and toxins in its tiny pores. This process, in this process, activated charcoal absorbs chemicals, inks, and toxins from your bloodstream so they will no longer cause harm to the body. It can bind up to 1,000 times its weight. Doctors have also used activated charcoal topically for wound care since ancient times for surgical infections and to aid in wound healing, okay? Uh, one thing that's not in this presentation that I'd like to mention is that when you have food poisoning or any kind of poisoning when you rush to the hospital, what do they pour into your system? Activated charcoal. I think bentonite clay too, but activated charcoal I know. Okay, so charcoal itself is not absorbed or metabolized by the body, so there's no chance of poisoning and nor will it harm the wound. Okay. okay, so the way that it's made, which I find really, really interesting, is actually it's taken from wood, mostly uh, coconut shells. I take it internally activated charcoal myself. Um, and it's a perfect, this is interesting, it's actually great for hangovers. So if you want to go out on the town, you're going to drink a lot, take a lot of activated charcoal, you will not have a hangover the next day. Because those pores, it acts like a super sponge. 
and it takes in all the toxins and it eliminates it through the body. And it's the same thing with the withdrawal mask, except we're not putting it through the body, being metabolized by the body and excreted through the, um, the, uh, the excretion systems. It's coming out through the skin, through the open wound, okay? So the carbon is actually exposed to nitri um, extremely high temperatures, um, 600 to 900 degrees Celsius, which is extremely hot. And again, afterwards, and it's cooled down in nitrogen, okay? Um, and then the second time, the carbon is placed in the heat tank and exposed to steam and oxygen. So through this process, a pore structure is created, and the usable surface area of the carbon greatly increases, as we said before, by a thousand times, okay? Okay, now we come to my favorite. I love, I love flowers and smells and stuff. So here's the essential oil of lavender. So before I started with this, um, into holistic healing and whatnot. I thought that oils, I had no idea. I thought they just smelled nice, you know. It's a nice way to purify your car, your house. But I had no idea how actually powerful they are and um, why they're used in holistic medicine and why they actually work. So this is interesting. And one thing I want to note about lavender is I have, I have a, this is what convinced me, I have extreme allergies, really, really bad allergies to the point my eyes flare up and I can't breathe. My mother, who really enjoys um, the uh, essential oils, she said, try lavender. I inhaled the lavender and my allergies instantly disappeared. And that's when I knew that there's something more to essential oils than just smells and, you know, oh, that's nice, kind of like, you know, hippy skippy stuff, it works. Okay, so essential oil of lavender has a very powerful antiseptic properties. Applying it to wounds can not only increase cell growth, causing the wound to heal faster, but it also decreases the appearance of scars. So studies have shown that lavender oil promotes collagen synthesis and differenti differentiation of fibroblasts, meaning that during the development process, those fibroblasts actually change uh, in order to uh, achieve what, they're, what they want to achieve within that area of the skin, which is cool. So it's also accompanied by upregulation of uh, growth factor beta, okay? Uh, human growth factor beta. So the data suggests that lavender oil has potential to promote wound healing in the early phase by acceleration of formation of granulation tissue, tissue remodeling by collagen replacement and wound contraction through the upper regulation of TGF beta. So basically what these cells are doing is that they're healing at the, mole at the molecular or cell um, uh, base, like basically like our DNA. It's, it's healing us from the very base basic properties of what we're comprised of, okay? So lavender oil stimulates the cells to produce growth factors that aid in collagen production and wound healing. So what does that mean for us? It means that it actually aids in the regeneration of scar tissue and regeneration of skin, which I find really cool. So that's the powerhouse of what's, what's in lavender oil, okay? I don't think I have anything else, so I'm gonna exit out of here, and then I'm gonna stop sharing my screen, and I'm gonna hand this over to Erica, who's gonna cover the repair serum. Okay, so the Repair Serum, everybody, is a patented product. This patented product, can everybody hear me? Mm. Okay, um, this patented product is, um, has a lot of different good ingredients in it, right? One of the ones is the aloe. The aloe aids in moisture retention. It also aids in product penetration, and it also helps accelerating the a healing process and reducing the inflammation on the wound. It all has the copper gluconate in it, which gives it that orange color. And this also helps to collagen and elastin. Of course, it also has AC11, which is also known as cat's claw. Cat's claw is also a botanical. It is um, activates the body's natural zinc finger technology and able to increase DNA repair 33%. So the body actually does have a way that it does go in through and it repairs the DNA. And if you think about it, this heals on a cellular level. So instead of having a road that has potholes and then they just go in and fill in the potholes, which we all know is a very temporary fix, this is actually, um, basically almost replacing the road. It's created it new to where you can't tell where those potholes are. Well, this is important because in order, cells multiply, right? They divide, they re, uh, replicate. And so we want a good cell replicating. We don't want a damaged cell replicating or else you're getting damaged cells. So that is important. This, um, this product is absolutely 100% necessary and it's 
using this product along with the moist healing that allows for the best results in the skin afterwards. This is how we achieve that um, beautiful skin in healing. Clients can't believe, in fact, this is why um, not just it, but this also helps in the scar minimization. So for example, if you've seen some of our pictures before and afters, you'll see somebody who has a scar in their brow and now they don't have a scar in their brow or it's, it's highly reduced. And this is because, part of this is because of the repair serum and the moist healing. Um, that also helps um, to rebuild collagen. It aids with um, in healing the melanocytes because it does heal at that DNA level, right? So those melanocytes that are being healed is what helps with our sun protection. It also helps our making sure our pigment doesn't have hyperpigmentation or hypopigmentation. Hy hypopigmentation is actually the cell, the melanocytes that have completely died. But we want to make sure that we're giving the cells every bit of the nutrition that they can in order to be able to heal properly and be able to have good, healthy skin and tissue. This is important to show your clients, too, exactly how to put it on. You don't want too much. If you put too much, it leaks out of their um, bandage. And when it leaks out, now it's out. If they don't put enough, then it's drying out. Well, if it dries out, remember that one of the reasons that we moist heal and use this product is because this is what continues that ink chelation process. Remember the ink chelation technology that we created, number one, in the needling process, number two, with the withdrawal mask. Now we're continuing it. So we're not just going to get out pigment right then and there during the procedure, but we're going to continue to have the body purge that pigment to continue to have those ions bind and the body to continue to see it come out. I've seen the inculation process happen after 21 days. That was pretty astounding. Uh, most of the time it doesn't last quite that long, but we do encourage this process for up to 21 days. The more dedicated your client is at this process, the more ink release they will see, the better lift they will see and uh, the better healed result on their skin. And when they see the difference, that's when they really, it's, it's an easy way to be able to sell them on it. My clients who have had, who stuck it out longer one time and not so much, they could see the difference in the amount of pigment that came out. So that really encourages them to go ahead and do that. You tell your clients, do you wanna go through this how many times? One time, two times, three times? Well, it depends on you, how dedicated you are to that aftercare process. Um, the other thing about it is, um, let's say we talked about too much, too little, the process of 21 days. We talked about the, uh, I think that's pretty much everything we covered. The thing was the vitamins have some vitamin C in it. Once in a while, you will find somebody who does have a topical allergy to vitamin C. If they do, we do have a different product that they can use on this, and this is for allergies, it's called HEAL. We are going to talk about HEAL and allerg allergic reactions next week, so stay tuned for that. But the vitamin C can also feel a little stingy, and it depends on, two a couple of different things. The person, right? Some people are more susceptible to feeling in that burn and sensation. Other people don't feel it so much. And then the, the more you needle, or I should say the less, are, if you don't do such a great job of needling, they're going to feel that burn more. The more intact the skin is, the, bet, the less burn they will feel to a degree. And for an example, I had had a big accident where I had scraped off a lot of skin, some of the palm of my hands, my legs, my ribs, my feet. Uh, this was a motorped or scooter accident, line scooter accident, so be careful on those. Um, but this accident, I started putting the repair serum on, and it was amazing how much more intense the burn was. The skin that I had completely taken off all the epidermis, where there was just dermis left, that's where it was a really intense burn. So it does, it was definitely something to see. And also, there was a, one point on one of the wounds, I did not put this repair serum on it for a couple of days. And when I put it back on, it rehydrated that wound and it started to bleed slightly. So it just goes to show that that is how important or how well this product works as keeping the skin and the wound moist so that way it can continue to purge the ink. 
and um, oh, we, looks, we do have a question. How long from procedure to properly healed? It depends. Um, it can be uh, most of the time is less than three weeks. For some people, it is. It really just depends on how much needle fast skin recovers. But it's usually up to three weeks, and at that point, they need to take it off. But I would say. Most of the time, two weeks is when it's completely healed over where you have wonderful, beautiful new skin. I have seen it in a week though. Uh, Julia and Leah, what have y'all's experience been? I know that it varies yeah. from person to person. That's what I was gonna say. From I think from person to person, it varies. Um, obviously, because everybody heals differently. And also um, from area to area on the body as well. And it's how um, efficiently, I guess, you can get that product sealed in. Um, so when you're working on areas where it's not as easy to seal the product in and make sure the dressing is airtight, um, you'll find that it does close up a little bit sooner. Notice that on yes. um, the brows yes. and obviously like PMU treatments, obviously. It's not like we can properly, properly cover up the lips or the eyes or anything like that. But I've also noticed it on areas, um, like I say, where it's just a little bit hard to properly dress. Like I'm removing one um, on my ankle. It's almost up along the side of my Achilles tendon. So obviously it's a slim area anyway, but then there's constant movement throughout the day. So that I found um, healed a lot quicker. I closed up a lot quicker um, than others, but I did also notice that it wasn't as much of a lift as I've had on others. So for the healing, um, like I say, it's like same as you really, Erica, anything between um, of seven days to 21 days, um, which is the ideal period anyway. We don't really want to push any further on than that 21 day period. Yeah, I right. And that's. I, I, I oh, go ahead. Sorry, I didn't mean to jump. Um, no, I've, no, you're good. I've seen wounds that um, actually after two weeks still look like I just worked on them. Um, yeah. But it still, it just means that the ink chelation technology is still working. So I just Absolutely. wanted to I'm removing one on my toe that um, I've had, I think it's three previous laser sessions on before, and it was it was implanted quite deep, so it's it, ha it had blown out, it was a blowout underneath, and I think on around day 14, it looked like a completely fresh tattoo. It had drawn up, it looked so black. Obviously, when you've got a blowout, especially with carbon, it looks like blue, doesn't it? Blue-gray. And it looked like a new black tattoo. It lifted right up to the surface, and now it's because the way the extract work it almost feeds off the surrounding tissue as well it's almost drawn the blowout black back in so it's actually a, now it's healed after just one extract treatment it's actually a neater tattoo than it was anyway because it sucked that mm -hmm. that blowout back up to where it kind of think should have been in the first place so yeah that was really impressive on that one yes it's actually i've seen that a lot where the person's um area the specific tattoo especially on the brows how it starts to shrink the client will even say yeah. that they'll be like oh it looks like it's sh shrinking mm -hmm. and it, it is in a way it's drying up but in the brows are also can be a little bit difficult area so you have to really show your client how to dress those properly because it is around that orbital bone and depending on how strong their orbital bone is, as well as their register and where we're all transplanted, it can be a little bit tricky to be able to, for them to be able to do that. We do show you in class how to dress it, and we also have you dress it to make sure that you understand exactly how to do that to show the client as well. Yeah. So, um, let's see, is there a scenario where a client cannot go through the extract procedure? Yes, there is. Um, that would be um depending on their immune system the immune system has a lot to do with this remember we are holistic right so we are engaging the immune system to be able to and the body's natural response to be able to get rid of this so if the person has a very low immune system um i have had somebody who contacted me who wanted brow removal and she had had a liver transplant and so at that point we decided that she would not be a good candidate for that but um, it really, it's, there's a lot of different situations that you really need to ask your clients a lot of questions in order to be able to pre-qualify them and make sure that they're in good health and good condition. And sometimes you just might need to require a doctor's note just to kind of go get clearance on them. Which is obviously everything that we do go over on training anyway, isn't it? Like we are, we have got a very, very thorough manual and, um, 
theory training to make sure you be comfortable in making those decisions as well. Yeah, I think that's all the questions I can see. Okay, everybody. Well, join us next week to talk about allergies, allergic reactions in regards to tattoos and a solution that we have for you. So that will be interesting. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Yes. Thank you. Take care, Take care everybody. Bye.